three things that we must do in these end times. And that is number one, we must be business minded. Number two, we must mind our business. And number three, we must stand on business. What does it mean to be business minded in these end times? It means that we must do everything in our power so that we and our families, our households, our ministries can be self-sustained, self-sufficient, options oriented, income oriented, financially free, ministry minded and kingdom minded. What do all of these things mean? In these end times, the enemy wants to financially cripple the masses to make them more dependent. Whenever people are dependent on the system, the system can force people to do things that they would not otherwise do. This is why it's very important in these times to be self-sustained, self-sufficient, options-oriented, income-oriented, financially free, ministry-minded, and kingdom-minded. In past times, whenever a country or a nation was at war with another country or another nation, one thing they would do to cripple their enemy is to cut off their resources, resources of water, resources of food any type of resources that cause that people to be self-sustained. We see the same strategy being implemented today by the enemy where he is poisoning certain food. He is poisoning certain water. He is uh, blowing up certain food factories so that individuals are not able to get access to the best foods, to the best water, causing people to be again, dependent on the system which is why in these times, it is even more important to be business-minded, to find ways to be self-sustained and self-sufficient, to harvest, to be able to wild crab, to be able to homestead. These are ways that the enemy will not be able to infect or poison the food or water supply when we ourselves take that into our own hands to do it. In these times, the enemy is trying to financially cripple people with the mass layoffs, with inflation. This is why it's very important that we be income oriented, options oriented. Whenever a person is forced to go to a place of work, and keep certain policies that go against their belief system, this causes a person to then be disloyal to their Elohim. Whenever a person is forced to work on the Sabbath, just to be able to bring in income for the family is putting them in a situation where now they feel like they're having to disobey the most high just to be able to get income for the family. Whenever a person is forced to take a COVID vaccine or a COVID jab just to be able to keep their job, they are now in a position where they are lacking options. They feel like they don't have options, so they bow to the system, which is even more important in these times while we must be business-minded so that we create multiple streams of income to have multiple options so that we can rely on our own streams of income for if the job wants to say, you have to work on the Sabbath, we can say, thank you, but no thank you. I have another stream of income. I refuse to deny. I refuse to disobey my Elohim in order to rely on the income that y'all are giving me. If a job wants to force someone to get a COVID vaccine or a COVID jab, they can say, thank you, but no thank you. I have other streams of income. I have other options where I don't have to bow to that agenda. This is why it's important in these times to be business minded. As the Messiah said, I must be about my father's business. So it's very important in these times that we be ministry minded and kingdom minded even putting that first above all things so that we are making sure we're carrying forth the mandate that the Messiah gave us to go out and teach, to go out and baptize, to go out and minister to those in need, to go out and cast out the demons, to go out and heal the sick and lay the hands. These are things that he is expecting to see from us as fruit whenever we stand before him. So in these times where the enemy is trying to cripple so many people through dependence on the system and financially cripple people, we have to be kingdom minded to carry forth the things that the Messiah has given us to do. We must also be business minded so that we are bringing in the resources needed to take care of our families. In these times, we must be business minded. In these times, we must also mind our business. What does this mean? This means to overcome distraction, deception, and destruction. In these times, whether online or in person, the enemy is trying to use so many temptations and delusions. As the scripture said, in the last days, there would be strong delusion sent upon the people. 
So in order for us to mind our business in these times, we have to be single of mind, as the Messiah said. We have to be able to overcome all of the distractions. We have to be able to resist all of the temptations. We have to be able to discern all of the deceptions. We have to be able to elude all of the enemy's destructions in these times by minding our business. The adversary wants our mind on so many other things except minding the things of the Most High, except our mind being singular on what the Most High would have us to focus on so we can bear fruit and bear results for his kingdom. So in these times, we must mind our business so that we overcome all the distractions, all the delusions, all the deceptions, and be able to overcome all the destruction that the enemy is trying to send our way. In these last times, we must also stand on business. What does it mean to stand on business? They have a saying where they say, I'm standing on business. This means that I'm committed. This means that I'm unwavering. This means that I'm unbreakable. This means that I'm loyal to the soil and I'm completely faithful to what it is that I believe I'm standing on business. These are my principles. I'm standing on business. These are my belief systems. Whenever we say we're standing on business, we're taking a stance just like the people did in the days of Maccabees where they were trying to force them to eat pork. And the people said, I'm standing on business. I will not eat pork. I'd rather be a martyr. We're standing on business just like Abraham did when he stood before Nimrod and said, I will never bow down to your idols. Standing on business means you're unwavering. You're unbreakable. You have an endurance that will never stop. You will not fall away. You are completely and forever committed to the most high, to the Messiah, to the keeping of the commandments. You are standing on business, unbreakable, never will disobey, never will be disloyal to the most high. And this is very important in these times as well, because what the enemy is doing is he's wanting to bring people to a breaking point. He's wanting to put out so many temptations that would draw people away, that would make people fall away. He's trying to wear out the patience of the saints through all of his campaigns and projects. He's trying to wear out the patience of the saints so that people would no longer stand on business, so that people would not be like those in the days of the Maccabees, so that people would not be like the disciples and apostles that was willing to martyr themselves because they stood on business for the doctrine and the way of the Most High. In these times, we must stand on business because there's so many false doctrines and false prophets that's going out there. We must stand on business in our belief in the Messiah. We must stand on business in our keeping of the commandments. We must stand on business and make sure that we're not tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine and all these liars that are out here. We must stand on business and make sure that we build our household on solid ground, not like the others in the parable that the Messiah spoke spoke of sinking sand. We must build and stand on business in these last times and make sure we have the correct doctrine, that we are baptized into the correct spirit and that we are following the correct Messiah. We must stand on business in these days. We must be business minded. We must mind our business and we must stand on business in these last days. Let's go through some scriptures here as it pertains to being business-minded and minding our business in these times. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 9 through 12. Here's what it says. But we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more, and that ye study to be quiet and to do your own business and to work with your own hands as we have commanded you, that ye may walk honestly toward them that are without and th that ye may have lack of nothing. So this is a commandment given by the apostles and the disciples where they're telling us in these times, increase more and more. Make sure that whatever you're putting your hand to, that you are increasing more and more. If it's kingdom work, make sure you are increasing more and more, more baptisms, more healings of the sick, more casting out of demons, more bearing spiritual fruit, more bearing Holy Spirit fruit, more patience, more faith, more of every good thing. May you increase more and more in it, in your business, more and more sales, at your job, more and more well-doing more and more increase in these times as we have the mindset to be business minded and mind our business. They are telling us increase more and more. Whatever you do, become better at it. Whatever your skill sets are, sharpen them even more. Whatever your abilities are, become better at it. 
in your fellowships, be better and better. In forgiving your brother and sister, be better and better. In overcoming all the sins that try to bring you down, get better and better at overcoming them. They're telling us, be business-minded and mind your business. Make sure that you increase more and more in whatever you do. It says that, that she studied to be quiet and to do your own business. This means that we are not of those that are busy bodies. We are those who handle business. There's a difference between a busybody and a person handling business. The busybodies are online debating all day. The busybodies are constantly causing contention and division amongst other brothers and sisters, not minding their own business. The gossipers, the rumor starters, the debate starters, those who spread hatred, those who hate their brother and sister online or in person, those who cause contention and division amongst congregations. These are the busybodies, but those who handle their business are those in First Thessalonians that said they study to be quiet. These are those that rightly divide the word of truth. These are those that study to show themselves approved unto the most high. These are those that read the scripture cover to cover. These are those that pray and fast and meditate upon the laws and commands on how to keep them. These are those that mind their business and are business minded. These aren't the busy bodies. The scripture is telling us here what we must do to be business minded and mind our business. It says to work with your own hands. So these are the brothers and sisters that are not lazy. These are the brothers and sisters that are not constantly getting booted from one job to another because of uh, disobedience, because of th they've not had a good work ethic. These are those that are, do their job with honor. These are those that handle their business with honor. They're not lazy. They're not busybodies. They handle the business of the ministry. They handle the business of the household. They handle the business at their job. The scripture is telling us this, being business-minded, minding our own business. It says, study, be quiet, do your own business and work with your own hands as we commanded you, that ye may walk honestly toward them that are without and that ye may have lack of nothing. The scripture is telling us here in these first Thessalonian verses, the reason that we need to be business minded and mind our own business in these end times is that we have lack of nothing, that we lack no good thing. So that we're able to distribute to the needs of the saints. So that we're able to truly be effective ministers in these end times that lack nothing. Because a lot of the times, whenever people make bad decisions or whenever pe people make decisions that's against their belief or against their integrity, a lot of times they're doing it out of desperation. Desperation is what causes many people to make decisions that they later regret. It's that being in desperation. It's that feeling like they have no other options. So the scripture is telling us here in 1 Thessalonians that the reason we have to be business-minded and mind our own business is so that we're able to keep ourselves out of desperate situations where we're tempted to fall away. Desperate situations where we feel like we have to sin in order to uh, be able to get over to sin in order to put uh, food in the refrigerator, to sin in order uh, to be able to get something that we feel we need and that we're desperate for. So in these times, we have to be business-minded and mind our business so that we have lack of nothing, not just lack with finances and resources, but also so that we don't lack joy, also so that we don't lack strength, also so that we don't lack knowledge. This is why the scripture is telling us to study so that we don't lack knowledge. Many people get deceived because they get to a place where they're not studying to show themselves approved or they're ever learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. That's why the scripture is telling us in these times, we cannot lack nothing because the enemy will always try to come and bring temptation in the places where we're lacking. If a person is lonely, whether it be a brother or sister, that's when the enemy will try to send a deceiver and a seducer to try to make that brother or sister fall because they're lacking fellowship. They're lacking companionship. So they're in a place of loneliness. So they're very much more susceptible to the seduction of the enemy because the enemy can send some somebody to make them feel like I need to deal with this person so that I'm no longer lonely. It's desperation. It's doing things that are disobedience to the most high out of lack. Some people feel like they have to go to thievery because they're lacking finance. So they feel like they have to scam. They feel like they have to uh, 
hustle people. They feel like they have to lie. They feel like they have to murder. They feel like they have to do all these things. This is why scamming is on the rise because so many people are struggling because gas prices are rising because grocery prices are rising. People feel like they have to scam in order to get by because they feel like doing it the righteous, honest way. The money doesn't come quick enough. This is why it goes back to what I said before. We have to be option oriented and business minded in these times so that we're able to get resources for ourselves, finances for ourselves, so the enemy can't use uh, be, being a scammer, being a liar and going to sin in order to be able to feed our families. There's much more righteous ways for us to go about attaining resources and finances and wealth, and we don't have to do it the enemy's way. And the most high can still cause us to prosper and flourish and be abundant without disobeying him to do it. So in these times, we have to be careful that we lack nothing because the enemy can attack and use uh, seduction and deception for those who are in a state of lack. They feel like they'll do anything in order to get what they need. Now, being business minded and minding our business. Let's go to Galatians chapter six, verse three through five. It says, for if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. But let every man prove his own work and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. This is what it means to be business minded and to mind our business. In these times, so many people are feeling like they need a, a handout. So many people are feeling like uh, they can get attention through a pity party. But in these times, understand people's love has grown cold. Nobody is going to feel sorry for somebody that has the power and ability in order to better their situation. We can understand if it's orphans, widows, fatherless, the disabled, or people who don't have the ability to put in the work to better themselves. But for people that's able-bodied, able-minded, and have every opportunity in front of them to better themselves, nobody's going to feel sorry for them, and nobody's going to come to help or save them. This is important to know. This is why we have to revisit these scriptures here in Galatians 6, where it says in order for us to be business minded and mind our business in these times, every man must bear his own burden. Just like nobody can stand before you and I on the day of judgment, it will just be us standing before the most high the same way. We are responsible for putting food in our refrigerator. Each man is responsible for paying the bills of his household. Each man is responsible for taking care of himself, his wife, his children, his congregation. Every man must bear their own burden. So it comes a time of accountability where each man has to look himself in the mirror and say, it's on me to win. It's on me to overcome. It's on me to get victory, success, and destiny. If anybody going to take the game winning shot, it's going to be me. Give me the rock. Every man must bear his own burden. Every man must lift his bench press. Every man must do what it is that he needs to do to take care of him and his. Every man must bear his own burden. We all have to stand before the throne of judgment on our own. So in these times, in order to be business minded and mind our business, the scripture here says, let every man prove his own work. Instead of pointing out the beam in other people's eye, instead of pointing out other people's sin, Eve, every man must prove his own work. What is it that you are doing? What is it that I'm doing? What fruit are you bearing for the kingdom? What fruit am I bearing for the kingdom? So in these times, we can overcome distractions and debate and slander and all that a whole lot more whenever we're putting all our energy and our focus on proving our own work before the most high. Because the Most High sees in secret and he sees what's done openly. So we got to make sure we're putting in work in secret and openly so that the Most High will look at us and say, your work has been proven. Well done. You have bared your burden. Well done. Every man must be business minded and mind his own business so that he can prove his work before the Most High and before those around him. In these times, we must be business-minded, ministry-minded, kingdom-minded. As the scripture says, make the kingdom of the Most High your primary concern. This is the mindset we must have in these days. Let's take a look at the book of Acts, chapter 6, verse 1 through 3, and take a look at how the apostles and the disciples uh, administrated and handled the business of the ministry and the mindset that they had, that the mindset we must also have in these times. It says, and in those days, 
when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Then the 12 called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, it is not reason that we should leave the word of the most high and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. So the apostles and the disciples were looking for uh, men who were business minded and ministry minded. These men needed to be those of honest report, full of the Holy Spirit, and they were able to handle the business. We must make ourselves able to handle the business of the kingdom. In these times, we must make ourselves able, available, and willing for the Most High to use us. We must be full of the Holy Spirit. We must be those who have a mindset for the Most High's business, for the Most High's kingdom, so that we can be used to put up numbers for the kingdom of the Most High in this day and in this hour. This is a great time to be alive in these end times because we are those workers in the Messiah's parable that it talks about that they went out at the last hour and they were given the same reward. So the beautiful thing about this, us living in these times in this last hour, the work that we put in will be uh, given the same reward as those who were long before us. Just like the apostles and the disciples and all of the martyrs of those times, we who labor in these last hours, we will receive a reward just as great as the ancestors who went on before us. So that should give us motivation. That should make us want to, like it said in those verses I said earlier, that should make us want to increase more and more, to multiply more converts to the narrow way of truth, to multiply more disciples. As we just read here in Acts chapter six, it said that this was a time where the disciples were multiplying. There was a multiplication of people that was coming into the way of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There was a multiplication of people being added to the congregations. That's what we need to be about the Father's business doing, multiplying converts to the truth, multiplying brothers and sisters that we can uh, help and minister to in many ways. Because the apostles and disciples said, we need to put men over this business, over this ministry. There needs to be trustworthy brothers and sisters out there to do the work of the ministry. We don't live in times where all we do is sit around watching YouTube videos. We don't live in times where all we do is sit around debating on Facebook and Twitter all day. We live in times where we must be multiplying fruit towards the kingdom of the most high, multiplying disciples and converts to the kingdom of the most high, going out and being fishers of men and fishers of women. This is our assignment in this time to be business minded as it pertains to the business of the ministry and the business of the kingdom. We must be business minded, as it says in Romans chapter 12, 11 and 13, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the most high, distributing to the necessity of the saints, given to hospitality. You see, the reason that we must have this mindset is because there's brothers and sisters that depend on us winning. Each of us has a measure of faith. Each of us has an assignment given and understand this, that there's people whose destiny is tied up in you fulfilling your destiny. There's people out there that the father has set them in place as somebody that you will help. You will be that winner that will help somebody else be a part of a winning team. So we must be those that distribute to the necessity of the saints, but we can't do that if we're not in abundance. How can you distribute to somebody else's necessity if you also are in necessity? This is why is it important that those of us that the Most High is calling to a greater level in these times that we make ourselves able and available and not be slothful in business. Slothful means lazy. Slothful means lacking. Slack, uh, slothful means mediocre. Slothful means not attaining the greatness that you're capable of. So these are not the times for us to fall short of greatness. These are not the times for us to miss the game winning shot. These are not the times for us to be lacking in the spirit and lacking in fruit and lacking in motivation, lacking in discipline, lacking in focus. These are not that times. These are not the times for us to be slothful in business. We have to be sharpened. We have to be champions. We have to be attaining unto the greatness that the Most High has set before us in these times. Why? Because there's people that need us to be great.
This isn't just us wanting to attain to greatness for ego, for machismo, for boasting. No, this is us being commanded to rise to greatness because there's people that need us to be great so that they can survive. Joseph needed to be great because there was people, his family, namely our future nation that was relying on him to be in that position so that he can feed them during the time of famine. And famine will be coming to this land sooner than later. So there's going to need to be Joseph's. There's going to need to be captains. There's going to need to be servants of greatness, people of victory, success, and destiny, people of the most high that will be able to rise up and minister and distribute to the necessity of the saints. So it's commanded that we be great. We're not doing this for ego. We're not doing this just to say I'm inspired and motivated. We're doing this because we are commanded to be great because there are people whose survival depends on us winning and being great. We have to have abundance in order to minister to their necessity. We have to have abundance of truth. We have to have abundance of knowledge. We have to have abundance of resources. We have to have abundance of all these good things so that we can distribute it to them when that time comes. The book of Ecclesiastic is chapter 51, verse 30, being business minded. Here's what it says. Work your work betimes and in his time, he will give you your reward. So the scripture here is telling us that we have to be repetitious, committed, never stopping, never slacking, never falling away on the work that the Most High has put in our hand. The ministry work that he's put in our hand and also the financial business that he's put in our hand. The scripture here says in Ecclesiastic, it's also known as Sirach 5130, work your work be times. What this means is that every day rise, every day rise and do the work. Every day get up and do the work. Every day rise and do the work is repetition of a champion. It's called the repetition of a champion to keep going, to keep enduring. Blessed are those who endure. Blessed are those who overcome. So in these times, we can't be weary and well-doing. We can't say, oh, it's not working. I'm done. Oh, uh, they not feeling it. I'm done. We got to continue to work our work betimes. It's a consistency. It's an endurance that we have to have in doing this work, whether it's business or ministry. We have to keep going. The scripture says be instant in season and out of season. It's like an athlete that they're working out, whether it's the season or whether the season is over. Either way it goes, they're still doing their workouts. We have to be those spiritual athletes that we're always doing our workouts. We're always keeping our commands. We're always studying our scripture. We're always doing our prayers. We're always doing our priestly duty, our kingdom duty, our warrior duty, our servant duty. We are working our work betimes. And the scripture here says, and in time, the most high will give you your reward. Our reward is coming. Our championship is coming. Our crown is coming. This is why it says in 2 Chronicles chapter 15, verse 7, be ye strong, therefore, and let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. So don't stop baptizing. Don't stop laying hands. Don't stop praying for brothers and sisters. Don't stop teaching the truth. Don't stop working on your business. Don't stop having a spirit of excellence on your job. Don't stop fellowshipping with other brothers and sisters. All those things that you were called to at the beginning of this walk, continue to do those things because there's a reward at the end of this. There's a crown at the end of this. There's a championship at the end of this. Endure. We must be business minded. We must mind our business and we must stand on business. Listen to what it says here in Proverbs 22, verse 29. It says, seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings. The scripture here is telling us that those who put so much focus and energy into their skill sets, into their work, they will rise, they will ascend. So we must be those who put that diligence into everything we do, whether it's your job, whether it's your business, your work for the kingdom. There has to be a diligence about it. There has to be a winner's mindset about it. There has to be a championship mindset about it. The scripture says the most high loves a cheerful giver and a doer of the word. These are people that they count it all joy. They look forward to doing the work of the Most High. We can't have a murmuring negative spirit about doing the work of the Most High. We can't have a murmuring negative spirit about doing the, the work of our business. 
We have to have an attitude where we put championship level sacrifice into everything we do to be diligent in our business. And whenever we do that, the scripture says that we shall stand before kings. We shall be men and women of greatness whenever we have that mindset of diligence. Proverbs chapter 10, verse four, it says, he becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. This means that those who have that championship diligence, those who have that championship DNA, those who have that championship mindset, those willing to put the level of work in of excellence, these are those that will be made abundant. These are those that will stand before the King of Kings and hear well done. These are those that will have victory, success, and destiny in this life and in the life to come. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 24, the hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. This says that those who have a loser mindset, those who have a defeat mindset, that they will always end up being servants and slaves. Those who have that negative mindset, that murmuring mindset, just that overall loser spirit and loser mindset, they will always end up being under tribute, which means they will always be servants and slaves. They will always stay at the bottom. People who do not have a winner mindset will always stay at the bottom. People who have a mindset that they never want to better themselves. They never want to increase their fruit towards the most high. They never want to increase their faith. They never want to increase the work towards the most high. They never want to increase in their studies. These are those that will always stay at the bottom and be under tribute. But the most high has called us to be the head and not the tail. He's caused us to be the champion and not the defeated. So this is not those who are of that righteous royal remnant. We are those that have a diligent hand who shall bear rule, who shall bear rule. As the Messiah said, I will give him an iron rod and with it, he shall rule over all nations. These are the ones that the adversary, the enemy, and the sons and daughters of the oppressor will come bending unto them and, lick, and licking the dust of their feet because these are the righteous champions. These are the set apart winners who have decided to be diligent and put their all into the kingdom of the most high. Let that be us. Let that be you and I. Proverbs chapter 13, verse four, it says, the soul of the sluggard desireth and have nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. This is telling us that those who have the soul of a champion, those who have the soul of a winner, those who have the soul of the righteous, the obedient, the commandment keeping, full of the Holy Spirit, with that mindset to be business minded, mind their own business and stand on business. The scripture says, these are the ones that shall be made abundant. These are the ones that shall stand as champions with that game time mindset. The losers that are turned into winners, the righteous remnant whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Let that be us. Let that be you and I. This is why we must be business minded, mind our business and stand on business. The book of Ecclesiastic is also known as Sirach chapter 10, verse 26 and 27 says, be not overwise in doing thy business and boast not thyself in the time of thy distress. Better is he that laboreth and aboundeth in all things than he that boasteth himself and wanteth bread. Here, the scripture is telling us that we must be business minded instead of talking. We must handle business instead of talking. The scripture there said it's better for somebody that quietly handles their business and has no lack and abounds in all things than a person that is boastful, always putting themselves on the forefront, always wanting to be seen, yet they lack bread, yet they're in lack. It doesn't make sense to be out here running our mouth, trying to be seen by everybody, trying to be the one everybody's looking up to when things ain't right in our own household. What does it look like for the refrigerator to be empty, the household in disarray, uh, the family broken, but out here ministering and teaching to everybody else? No, first we got to get our own households in order. First, we got to labor and abound in all things in order to even be qualified to be able to speak and teach to others. How can we share with them what we ourselves have not done and have not accomplished? Let us not be of that mindset to be out here boastful and trying to put ourselves in front of everybody, yet things aren't right in our own life. Let us be of those that, like the scripture says, we labor and abound in all things, and then we're qualified to teach and share truth with others because we they can see it working in our own lives. They can see our families together. They can see us in abundance. 
But in these times we live in, there's many people that are boasting themselves, yet they want bread. As the scripture said, they're putting themselves out in the forefront, yet things are not right in their own household. So let us be of those that are business minded, handle our business and stand on business so that then we may be qualified to teach to others and lift others up out of their low condition because we have been lifted up out of our low condition. Hallelujah. All praise. We must mind our business in these times. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 26, verse 17. It says, he that passeth by and meddleth with strife belonging not to him is like one that taketh a dog by the ears. Now, whenever you take a dog by the ears, you're going to get bit. That's what the scripture is saying here. So the scripture is telling us we don't need to be like those that are, are never minding our own business. People have literally got killed for not minding their own business. I remember when I was living out in D.C., there was a story of this Christian pastor that was very well known in the community where at a gas station, he was trying to break up a fight between two wicked Negroes, meaning he wasn't minding his own business. And then he ended up getting killed and both of the Negroes that was fighting each other uh, ran off. So situations like that, uh, people not minding their own business. In these times, it's dangerous for people not to mind their own business. And that's in person or online. You got individuals jumping into arguments and debates, um, taking sides in certain beefs and arguments online. And then brothers and sisters end up getting offended. Then people go into unforgiveness all because somebody did not mind their own business. You got people uh, quick to run and jump and do videos about matters that don't even pertain to them, having people name in their mouth and they don't even know the person, uh, just having everything all wrong and putting false narratives out there. This is what's going on today because people are not minding their own business. And a lot of times what ends up happening is people catch strays. People end up catching strays, ones who jumped into it that didn't have nothing to do with it, now they be the ones that end up getting hurt. And it don't even be the people that started the argument or started the beef or uh, was the origin of the misunderstanding. It ends up being the person that didn't mind their own business and jumped into it. That's why the scripture says, don't meddle in strife that doesn't belong to us. Also, the book of Sirach, Ecclesiastes, chapter 11, verse 9 and 10. Strive not in a matter that concerneth thee not, and sit not in judgment with sinners. My son, meddle not with many matters, for if thou meddleth much, thou shalt not be innocent. If thou follow after, thou shalt not attain, neither shalt thou escape by fleeing. So the scripture here is telling us that it's vanity for people that jump into business that don't belong to them. It's vanity. And it says by doing that, they'll end up committing some sin. Those who meddle in business that doesn't belong to them, those who don't mind their own business, they end up causing themselves to sin, is what the scripture here is saying. They end up spreading rumors. They end up slandering somebody. They end up accusing the innocent and letting the guilty go free. And a lot of times, whenever people don't mind their own business and jump in a matter that doesn't belong to them, whether online or in person, what ends up happening is they find out later that they shouldn't have done that. Then they want to get out of it, but it's too late. As the scripture here says, they shall not escape by fleeing. Meaning once you get in somebody else's business, now it's too late. Now they're looking at you as you part of the problem too. There's been situations where two folks were fighting Somebody tried to jump in that didn't have nothing to do with it or know either person, did not know either person involved. And then they end up getting punched in the mouth. Now they want to get out of it. And now the two people that was fighting each other, now they both jumping and beating them down. The person that didn't mind their business. And this happens naturally and spiritually where people jump in business that has nothing to do with them. It happens spiritually as well. Think about the case where there was those men that tried to cast out the demon and the demon ended up telling them, Paul, I know the Messiah, I know, but who are you? And the demon ended up beating them down because they wasn't minding their own business. They jumped into something that they didn't have the power to handle. They did not have the back end of the most high or the anointing to be able to handle that type of demon or that type of unclean spirit. So people need to understand in these times, whether it's spiritual or natural, don't jump into affairs that you are not equipped to handle. If you know it's something that you're not equipped to handle, mind your business. 
because you'll end up sinning or getting hurt by jumping into something that don't belong to you. Let's go to the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 29, verse 19. It says, a wicked man transgressing the commandments of the Most High shall fall into suretyship, and he that undertaketh and followeth other men's business for gain shall fall into suits. The scripture is so on point about everything because this is something that we see a lot of today. You have these groups like the Shade Room, people like Tasha K, all these gossip channels. A lot of times they end up not minding their business and they end up saying something false about somebody and then they end up getting a lawsuit put on them for running their mouth. We live in a time where many people are doing lawsuits. It could be for small things or big things. And a lot of times now people are getting sued for running their mouth about people and don't know what they're talking about, spreading rumors and don't know what they're talking about, putting out false narratives and don't know what they're talking about. And the scripture here says anybody who uh, spreads those lies and gets in other people's business for gain, that they shall fall into lawsuits. This is what we see a lot of happening today. People not minding their business end up getting sued. People not minding their business and end up getting hands put on them. So again, in these times, we must be business minded. We must mind our business and we must stand on business. And one thing I noticed a lot of times, these people that run their mouth, these people that's constantly in other people's business, they are in lack themselves. A lot of these people be the main folks that's the brokest. A lot of these folks running their mouth and in people's business all the time be the ones that have the least spiritual fruit. That's why they're spending so much time in other people's business because they have no business of their own. And this is what the scripture here is selling, telling us that those who do that, that they shall not obtain. Meaning they shall always have lack. They shall always be in want. They shall always be broke and at the bottom because they don't have a mindset to be business minded, to mind their own business and to stand on business. But for those of us who are seeking to be the righteous royal remnant, those of us who are seeking to enter in and get the championship crown, we must be those that are business minded, mind our business and stand on business. It's very important in these times that we stand on business. As it says in the book of Ecclesiasticus, Sirach, Chapter 32, verse 20 and 21 and 23, it says, go not in a way wherein thou mayest fate may fall and stumble not among the stones. Be not confident in a plain way. In every good work, trust thy own soul, for this is the keeping of the commandments. What that's telling us to do is telling us to stand on business. It's telling us to be faithful to those principles that we have dedicated our lives to. What are those principles? We believe in Yeshua HaMashiach. We believe that he was lynched, buried, and resurrected three days later. We stand on business as it pertains to our unwavering faith in the Messiah. We will never be of those who fall away and say we no longer believe in the Messiah. We will no, never be a part of the camp of the non-Messianics and those who blaspheme the Messiah those who reject his redemptive work, those who trample upon his blood. We stand on business and we say we stand by the side of the Messiah, even if it means persecution, even if it means martyrdom. We love the Messiah because he loved us. We stand on business. We stand on business as it pertains to the doctrine and way of the Most High given to the Messiah and the disciples and Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We don't go unto any false religion of Christianity or Islam or Judaism or any of these false witchcraft paths. We stand on business and we say that we repent, that we are baptized by water baptized by the fire of the Holy Spirit. We keep the commands of the Most High. We work out our salvation and we endure to the end. We stand on business. We do not go to idolatry. We do not go to these end time deceptions. We stand on business. We stand on that solid ground of what the Most High has laid forth. And we don't waver in that. We stand on business. We will not get any foreign things injected into us in the form of a vaccine that the father has not sanctioned us to get. We stand on business. Whenever they come out with the chip and the B system, we will not get chipped in our forehead or in our hand. We stand on business. We will not betray the Messiah. We will not be of those who fall away. We stand on business. We keep the most high's commands and worship him in spirit and in truth. We stand on business. That's the business that we stand on.
the way of the most high, the way of those who will enter into eternal life and have their name written down in the Lamb's book of life. We stand in on business, unwavering, loyal to the soil. All praise be to the most high. We are standing on business. That's what we must do in these end times because the enemy is doing everything he can to try to make people curse the most high and die. The enemy is trying to do everything he can to make people blaspheme the Holy Spirit so that they will never have forgiveness. The enemy is doing everything he can to make husbands leave wives and wives leave husbands and break up families and break up ministries. He does not want people to stand on business individually and collectively. But that's what we must do in these end times is stand on business. Even when the enemy puts the pressure on, we must stand on business. Even when the enemy threatens us with jail, prison, death, we must stand on business. As it says in Revelation chapter 2, verse 10, fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful until death, and I will give thee a crown of life. This is the Messiah's way of saying, my children, stand on business. This is the Most High's way of saying, my sons, my daughters, stand on business. This is the Holy Spirit's way of saying, children of Israel, 12 tribes, stand on business. This is the uh, way of the Most High of saying, Gentiles who are grafted in through belief in the Messiah, through grafting on to the Holy Seed, stand on business. Don't waver. Stand 10 toes down, loyal to the soil, enduring to the end. In these times, we must be business minded. We must mind our own business and we must stand on business. As it says in Ecclesiastes, Sirach chapter 11, verse 20 through 23, be steadfast in thy covenant and be conversant therein and wax old in thy work. Marvel not at the works of sinners, but trust in the Most High and abide in thy labor. For it is an easy thing in the sight of the Most High to make a poor man rich. The blessing of the Most High is in the reward of the godly. And suddenly he maketh his blessing flourish. Say not, what profit is there of my service and what good things shall I have hereafter? So the scripture here is telling us we must never have a mindset where we feel like keeping the commands, serving the most high is vanity. We must never sit back and say, look at the wicked who are not obeying the most high and how much they prosper and flourish. We must be those who work our work to the end. We must be those who build our businesses to the end. We must be those who go about building the most high's kingdom to the end. We do not need to be getting distracted. We do not need to be uh, out here not minding our business and uh, getting distracted and falling into the destruction, delusion, and deception. We have to mind our business out here. We have to be business minded out here and we have to stand on business. We must be a people that are self-sustained, financially free, so that the system and the B system is not able to make us uh, cripple and crumble before it because we have no way to sustain ourselves and feed our family. We must be those who are minding our own business of a focused mindset, of a determined mindset, always going in the true way of the most high, not being deceived by none of these doctrines. We must stand on business to the end. We must be business minded. We must mind our business and we must stand on business. Do everything in your power to find out ways that you can be more income oriented so that uh, you are financially free so that you're not bowing to the system. Do everything you can to study, to show yourself approved and get this word deep inside you, hide it in your heart, study this word daily so that you're not ignorant of the truth and so that you're not deceived by the strong delusions the enemy will put out. Make sure that you're constantly in a mindset of being motivated and inspired and loyal to the most high so that you are standing on business unwavering in these end times. It's very important, family, that we as the remnant in these times be business minded, mind our business and stand on business, that we be those who have victory, success and destiny in this life and in the life to come. Make sure your family, make sure your household, make sure your ministry is thriving, abundant, so that the people have no lack, so that the people have no need. Make sure that yourself and those amongst you have a mind where you're not deterred. Make sure that y'all are standing on business and loyal to the most high and loyal to each other till the end. Let us go forward in victory, success, and destiny and be those champions. Shalom.